Hallelujah. Welcome to the Lord's house. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here already. He has met us here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on in. Come on in, everybody. Come worship the Lord with us. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. If you feel the presence of the Lord here in this house, just worship him. For God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on in. Come on in. Hit, hit the uh, share button and the like button, if you will. Let your friends. We want this to be corporate worship. We want this to be corporate praise. The more you share, the more others can get in on the praise and the worship with you. We don't want this to be mundane. And we want, don't want this to be something that we settle into on a whole nother level that is not intended for us to stop at. We want to take it to another level this morning. So hit the share button. Hit the like button. Tag somebody and let them know it's time to worship the Lord. Welcome to the Lord's house. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We don't own the rights to this music. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates. Oh, Jerusalem. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel the presence of breaking in this house. I feel the presence of breaking all in your home where you are. I feel that the presence of God is doing something powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel it. I feel it. I sense it. I sense it. I sense it. I sense that God is doing something today. And you don't want to move from this place without getting what God has for you. There is a blessing in this hour. There's a specific blessing in this hour. Hallelujah. But it's intangible. It's an intangible blessing. God is doing something in an area that we don't even understand. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome, 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 welcome. Bless the Lord. As we get into the word, I just don't want to even move from this place. It's hard. For me to move from this place. It's hard for me to move from this place because of the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. He has heard my cry and he pitied every groan. And as long as I live and trouble rise, guess what? I'm going to hasten to his throne. Ah, I sought the Lord and he heard me. And delivered me from all of my fears. I saw them. I, I saw them. I came after him. And he delivered me from not just one. Hallelujah. You got a testimony this morning. Don't you sit on your testimony that you praise the Lord this morning. He's been better to you than you have been to yourself. He's been greater to you than you have even ex imagined. Hallelujah. Don't you let a rock cry out. We were loud when we petitioned him. Just get loud because of the answer. He's a great and mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, you ought to magnify the Lord with us on Facebook. You ought to magnify the Lord with us on YouTube. You ought to magnify the Lord even wherever you are in your house. You ought to magnify him. You ought to magnify him. Don't wait till the battle is over. You need to shout now. Don't wait till it's all over. That's not faith. Faith is shouting and praising him before you see the manifestation. David says, I would have fainted. Unless I believe to see what? The goodness of the Lord. Where? Right here in the land. I ain't got to wait till I die to see the goodness of the Lord. <laughs> I can see it right here. In the land of the living. Woo. <laughs> Yay. Yes. 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 Shabak him. Toda him. 
Lift up your hands. Hallelujah. You who are trodden down, lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. The king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? It is the Lord strong and mighty. Who is the king of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. <laughs> yes. Yes, lift up a standard. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord will raise and lift up a standard. Raise a praise. Woo. He's God all by himself. <laughs> yes. When I think of the goodness, when I just think of where I could have been, when I think of how it could have ended, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul gets magnified. My soul cries out, hallelujah. What is the greatest praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if I'm getting on your nerves with my praise, hold my mule, because I got another praise on top of that. And then I got another praise on top of that. Did he save anybody's child? You got a praise on top of that. Did he keep you in your mind? You got a praise on top of that. Did he keep you from dangers that were seen and unseen? You got a praise. Hallelujah. Bible says, let everything that hath breath. If you got breath, you ought to praise him if you got breath. You ought to praise him if you got breath. Because <laughs> faith is the substance of things what? Hope for. But it's the evidence of what? Things not seen. The evidence is our praise in what we don't see. Ooh. Wow. Wow, there's a breaking in here. And it's a good breaking. It's a good breaking. It's a spirit of breaking here, and it is a good breaking. Wow. Hallelujah. 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 I don't even know how to ride into this place because it is the presence of the Lord that is here. Father, I just pray that you permeate the airways. I pray, Lord God, that your power and your Holy Spirit move through the airways and it sit right where it needs to sit in the homes of our loved ones that we've been praying for. Yeah, let it sit in, 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 in the places that it's, because you set your word. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you, Father. Is there a word from the Lord? Yes, there is always a word from the Lord. God is always speaking. Even in his silence, he's still speaking. And we're going to go to the book of John, chapter 20. Verses 19 through 22. John chapter 20. Uh, the Gospel of John. Chapter 20. Verses 19 through 22. Oh God, you are so awesome. You are so awesome. I believe some people have already gotten what they needed. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I think that I think they have. But so reads the word of the Lord. We're reading it from the Amplified Version. And it says, so when it was evening on that same day, that same day is the resurrection day, the first day of the week, though the disciples were meeting behind barred doors for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace to you. 
after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with great joy. That's what we're experiencing now, great joy. Then Jesus said to them, again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you as my representatives. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We're going to stop right there. We'll keep, we'll keep going. But um, I, I, I want to just talk about uh, process to Pentecost. Process. Process to Pentecost. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, oh, Father, I pray that your word would find who it needs to find and penetrate the hearts of men. Father, I bless and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't even know where to begin. This is such a great, great time that we are in uh, celebrating even last week, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And a lot of times we, in the body of Christ, I have noticed that we will celebrate Palm Sunday, uh, the entrance, the triumphant, ent triumphant entry of Jesus even uh, into our hearts, into Jerusalem. But then we'll celebrate the seven last sayings of Jesus on the cross, and we'll celebrate his resurrection, and then uh, many of us move and celebrate. Some of us, more than others, celebrate Pentecost. That's the 50 days after the resurrection. But not a whole lot is said about what happened between the resurrection and between Pentecost. And I submit to you that there was a process going on. And while we are in the season still of a pandemic, this is our second year celebrating uh, the resurrection and perhaps Pentecost in the pandemic, we must say that because uh, of, of where we are, we must be being processed. Yeah, and anybody feel like you're being processed? Yeah, I see hands all over. You feel like you're being processed, and you don't want to skip the steps to this process. Uh, when I, I, I looked at this scripture, uh, it talks about in, in the book of John, this 19th verse, talk about so when it was evening on that same day. So this is resurrection day. The evening of resurrection, um, it says that uh, they were meeting, the disciples were meeting in one place. And remember, Jesus has been resurrected. We need to find out what it is that has happened because we don't want to be ignorant of what the Holy Spirit is trying to show us before we come out. A am, am I there? Am I there? So the, 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 the Bible says that Jesus appeared to the disciples. He appeared to the disciples, and they sh he showed them his hands and his side. And when they saw it, they were filled with joy. But th this, this is uh, where I'm going. In verse 22, and he says, And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. But we're not at Pentecost yet. Come on, you better see that in Scripture. He says, he breathes on them and tells them to receive this power before he, they're actually moved to Pentecost. Says to me that when they receive it and when it's activated and when it's fully come, there's a process. Can I say that? Can I say that in this house? We don't have to wait for the 50th day because he's processing us now. We have the beginnings of what he's doing now. Whatever God has promised you that he's going to do, you have the beginning of it now. It just needs to be processed. Can you touch somebody? Just look them. Don't touch them. Don't touch them. We're in, we're, we're in pandemic. Just look at them from across the room and tell them I'm being processed. Yes, yes, what God has for me is being processed now. It wouldn't be so much if, uh, that I didn't see this, if that, is that uh, if I didn't see that he filled them, told them to receive it before manifestation, before the day of Pentecost was fully come. So it meant that must have been partially come. <laughs> wouldn't you agree? Because the day of Pentecost had to be fully come, 
And so there, that means a measurement from something being empty to something being full. And so it says he starts the process at resurrection. He's starting the process at your resurrection. Hallelujah. You got up out of the situation, but you still got to go through the process before your time is fully come. Oh, I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit here. He fills them, and the first thing he does, take note, number one, the first part of the process, verse number 23, he says, if you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. What? During my process, I got to forgive. Oh, see, it got real quiet in here. The first step is forgiving. He says, uh, and this is the power that I saw. You can't even forgive until you get filled with the Holy Ghost. Let, let me just, let me just, let me just go on because some of us understand that they always say, I'll, I, maybe I'll forgive, but I will never forget. The first step to your process is to forgive. Ah, but here, he didn't ask them to do that. Until he breathed on them. It says to me sometimes forgiveness is hard to administer without the power of the Holy Ghost. You want to know why we fall so many times in this forgiveness? Because we're trying to forgive out of our own strength. Can I... Um, uh, Megan, some, somebody just, 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 just slap yourself today and, and, and say, that's the problem I'm having is I know I need to forgive and I'm trying to forgive out of what I know, but the problem is that we got to submit to the Holy Spirit and let him help us to forgive. Somebody shout, come on, Holy Spirit. Yeah, you can't do this in and of yourself. This was just the beginning. He said, whoever you forgive, their sins are going to be forgiven because of their faith. Then he says, but if you retain the sins of anyone, they are retained and remain unforgiven because of their unbelief. So he says, you can either forgive or not forgive. <laughs> yeah. But guess what? When you don't forgive, they're retained. Retained means you holding on to them. Pertain, it means to someone else. Retain means to or you. So when you don't forgive, you're holding it up, uh, uh, into your own heart, and then you're going through a cycle of unforgiveness. And if you don't forgive your brethren, how, he said, how do you expect me to forgive you? Remember Matthew 6, forgive us of our trespasses. How? As we Forgive those who trespass against us. He says, this, is, this is all going back to you. You, you want to walk in power? You can walk with the power in you, but not exhibit the power. So right now, they got the power in them, but they are not, it's not activated in them. Because he said, the first thing you got to do is forgive. It's getting quiet in here. It's hard, right, because it keeps coming back up. Come on, be, be honest with me. That thing keeps coming back up. That's because you're trying to take your power, your, with your anointed self, and get the ten steps to forgiveness. You've gone through seven of them. By the time you get to eight, you got to go back to number one. And stand, by the time you get to nine, you forgot what number three was. The power of the Holy Spirit, he says, I need you to be broken in this area. And that way you submit to me. And it's my power that is forgiving. Yeah. 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 They walking around with power but can't forgive. Anybody know anybody like that? Walking around with your anointed self, you got power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, but what is it good to you? Nothing. 
because you can't forgive. I know what they did. I know it was horrendous. I know it was horrible. I know that it should have never been done to a dog. But guess what? What they did to Jesus was horrific. It, they should have never done it to a dog. He, but guess what? He began his discourse on the cross saying, Father, forgive. forgive. For they know not. Don't even hold it to their account. As a matter of fact, wipe it out. Can someone shout with me? Wipe it out. Yes. But the power of the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to push it and cause you, you, you. The reason you're frustrated is you're operating in your own power. Mm -hmm. So he appeared to them that, that first day. Begin to, he fills them. And then talks to them about forgiveness. The second time we see him is in verse 26 where it says, Eight days later, his disciples were again inside the house and Thomas was with them. Eight days later. Where are we? <laughs> Y'all better see where we are. We are eight days later. <laughs> How many of you know that Resurrection Sunday was last Sunday? But here we are. Another Sunday. Eight days Tell, tell your neighbor God is getting ready to do a miraculous thing. And the Bible says Jesus came through the doors that had been barred and stood among them and said, peace to you. That would have been enough for me to see Jesus walk through a wall. That, that would have been enough. That would have, he came to them to tell them everything that has barred you from your next place. I'm going to cause you to walk through it. That thing jumped in my spirit. Nothing can hold you back. Once you got the resurrected power of Jesus Christ in you, you're going to walk through that which held you back previously. We prophesied that last week. And some of you are going to walk through death. Some of you are going to walk through brokenness. Some of you are going to walk through things that you thought should have stopped you. Hallelujah in this house. Tell your neighbor, walk through it. Walk through it. Don't stand there and look at it like John. Be like Peter and run on through it. Woo. All those no's you got, get ready for a yes. Oh, my God. I heard that. All the no's you got, get ready for it. You better receive that. All the no's that you got. God said it wasn't your season yet. Now it's your season for yes. Oh, because remember when Jesus did all the miracles, he said, don't tell anybody because my time is not yet come. But now is my time. My time to go through things that were meant to stop me. Go apply again, I hear the Lord saying. Yes, yes. He's moved some situations out of the way. If, I, if Thomas had never seen his side in his hand, what in the world, just to know that Jesus could walk through something, why would Jesus do that? He was telling them that your mortal is going to put on immortality. When? At the point you accept him. Yeah, yeah. This immortal is going to put on immortality. Jesus walks through the door, not opening it through a barred. The scripture said it was barred. When I saw that word, I saw God. Some of your people have been barred from some things. They've been barred from some places. They thought they were being shut out from, by different people, not accepted in different places. They didn't recognize your anointing. They still didn't recognize Jesus as anointing because they're looking for his hands, looking for his feet. They should have recognized the fact that he came through the door. And the Bible says, I believe it's in Luke, he sat down and ate with them just so you know that I'm real, Jesus was saying. I'm, going to, I'm not just a spirit. I'm immortal. I have walked through death. I've walked through hell. I've walked through the grave. And here I am sitting down eating with you. Woo. Isn't that powerful? That's a miracle in and of him, himself. 
get ready. I heard the Lord say this clearly, that within the, the, the coming of the next few months, we're going to see many miracles, miracles that doctors, people cannot answer. They cannot answer, but it's going to be the presence and that power of the Holy Spirit at work in the earth realm. He was cleaning out the earth so that the spirit of the living God can now be resident here, even more so in the church than it ever was. We are moving into a season of miracles, signs. The Bible said the next thing he does is that the disciples are out on a boat in chapter 21. I'm walking the scripture. I'm sticking with text. He, he, he walked this says 21. One after this, Jesus revealed himself again. How many times God got to reveal himself to you? <laughs> many of you, you want him to give you a sign and a wonder. Tell me three times the Bible says that he re revealed himself again. Point number two. He's going to reveal himself to you again. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. They, uh, last was an old move. This new move, you're going to see God, Jesus reveal himself in a way to you by the power of the Holy Spirit like never before. Like never before. I know people have fallen off and they don't want to hear this. You know why? Because they don't understand that the power that they're walking in already. He can't re reveal himself to you until you walk in that power. Uh, he, where did he reveal himself? At the Sea of Tiberias or Galilee. And he did it in this way. The Bible says Simon, Peter, and Thomas, who is called Didymus, the twin, and Nathaniel from Cana of Galilee, as well as John and James, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Someone shout unity. Yeah, yeah. On the way to, to, to Pentecost, we got to forgive. We want to see miracle signs and wonders. But we got to walk in unity. I, I, I want to I move a little bit past that because th they were in unity. Now, remember, they got power in them. Don't forget that part because he has breathed them to them, into them. And what power do they have? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. But then the Bible says they go out at night fishing with their Filled with their, the Holy Spirit in them, <laughs> they go fishing. Man, God is powerful. And the Bible said they fished all night. <laughs> and they came back with nothing. They're on their way back. This is what God says. You can't catch fish in your own power. They had his power, but they were fishing by what they knew. And we see that a lot in the body of Christ. You have power in you, but you resort back to that old mindset. Uh, I only need about two people that know what I'm talking about. You are filled with power, but you need some instructions that come from your mind. And it's bad when you go out in power and come back with nothing. <laughs> I, 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 they, they went out with power and come back empty-handed because they've been fishing all night long. And the Bible says that Jesus was on the shore. Read it for yourself. Jesus was on the shore, and he called to them. Verse 6 says, and he said to them, cast your net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast their net, and then they were not able to haul it in because the great catch of fish. Jesus is on the shore. He's calling out to them, and he's telling them, take my instruction. You've been doing it your way for a long time and have gotten nowhere. You have power, but you have not activated it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. And the Bible says, you, I'm not telling you to not fish. I'm just telling you to do it my way. Can, can, I, can, I, can I get like two amens on this side? 
three amens, maybe five amens, maybe ten amens. God is not telling you not to do it, not to preach, not to teach, not to prophesy, not to move in this area. He said, but I need you to do it my way. What is my way? You got to, what do you have to do? You've got to submit to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I know you've been to college, and I know you've been to seminary, and I know that you, I know that you got all of this even in the marketplace. But he says, I'm not telling you to come out of the marketplace. I'm telling you to implore the power of the Holy Spirit and for you to get ready for increase. Oh, see, now they don't, they don't. somebody shout increase. When you say increase, everybody wants increase, but they don't want the process. Yeah, they want increase, but they don't want the process. And w- w- what is that? Most of us want the drive-through religion. We want to drive through, and we want them to take out orders, and we wait and drive to the next window, and it's done. But nobody wants to go in the kitchen and take out the food and, and, and season the food and allow it to marinate, and they don't want to put it in where it needs to go, in the fryer or in the baker. They don't want to do all of that. This is what we have to do at Pentecost. If we're getting to Pentecost, we've got to forgive, number one. Good God. Number two, we've got to expect miracles. Oh, my God. We got, after this, we've got to be unified. We got to be unified. You got that? And then here it is that you got to do things the way of the Holy Spirit. So let, let me say, let me say this. Most of us think that we are being led by the Holy Spirit. Can I say it again? Most of us think we're being led by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because we got 10 steps to this, five steps to this, and that must be the Holy Spirit. No. This is you, your power of your mind, telling you that the Holy Spirit is moving. How can you tell when the Holy Spirit is moving? There's a breaking. There's a breaking. I I read this and I thought it was powerful. One who is habitually gentle is gentle in himself, (laughs) not in the Lord. Remember the scripture says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of, (laughs) not the power of your might. So suppose the Lord wants that gentle person to stand up and utter some strong words. His natural gentleness will hinder him from following the Lord. (laughs) So he's not broken, but he's hiding in his introvertness, and he's holding on to his introvertedness instead of reasoning and and releasing it to the Lord. Okay. You see, everybody, they mad at me. Can somebody start my car? Uh, and, And he would say instead, I can't do this. I've never done it in my life. I've never uttered uttered such a harsh word in my life. Let someone else do it. I'm simply too shy. They're not broken. Does that, does it, is it resonating with anybody? Yes, yeah, so now that, that you, you, you're looking out for yourself, holding on to your shyness as a stronghold. Uh, wow. When I saw that, I said, God, you're right. He, he is saying even the most gentle person that, that won't come out of that gentleness when I ask them to do something is now in a place where they're being led and guided and directed by their own feelings, which have not been broken towards me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can, can, I, can I help you out of that? And when you say that's just me, that's a stronghold. The disciples were saying that's just me. We fish at night. That's what we do. <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> We've been doing this for all those years, and this is just who I am. And Jesus said to them from the sideline, look, do it my way. Because the way that you've been doing it, you have not walked into that next dimension yet. I want to do miracles, signs, and wonders, but I need you to be to, to, to su- submit yourself to my spirit's leading. 
You have it in you, but you're walking in who you are. Uh, uh. The Bible says they did take the net and put it on the other side. And, and, and the Bible said they didn't even recognize Jesus. You don't tell me. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. You mean to tell me they feel with the spirit he'd have breathed into him, to them, the Holy Spirit, and they still don't recognize him? You mean to tell me y'all been laying hands on the sick? Y'all been prophesying people out of this, out of darkness? Y'all been doing that? You don't still don't recognize him? Yeah. Remember, the day of Pentecost hadn't fully come. They're operating in the gift, but don't even know the giver. Just because you're gifted does not mean you're operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a realm that you can tap into that you've learned how to operate in out of natural, natural senses. Am I helping anybody? Because I feel a breaking in here today. Someone shall break me, Jesus. And guess what? Let me tell you this part, too. He told me this so powerfully. Jesus said, he said, I took the bread. I blessed it. I broke it. I gave it. When you try to break yourself out of something you know that is wrong, you are walking around opposite of the power of God. Jesus said, I took it. I blessed it. I bro- Let him do the breaking. Let him do the breaking. He, he'll do it in a way that won't hurt you. You stop trying to make yourself perfect and make yourself better. And every time this happens, you got this list. I'm going to do this and I'm going to make a list. He says, I need people who will surrender and submit to me and let me do the breaking. It takes a mission to let Jesus do the breaking. Yeah. Yeah. Am I helping anybody? Yeah, because you get tired after a while of chasing around your own faults. Anybody ever get tired of chasing your own faults? (laughs) They become so glaring to you, it's like a -a whack-a-mole. You get this one right, here comes something up on this side. You whack this one, here comes something up on this side. You whack the two of them and three of them come up. You whack in a mole every time that you see a fault in yourself. Stop it and surrender to the Holy Spirit. Someone shout, help me, Lord. Yeah. Yeah, it's meant, it's meant that self-sufficiency is meant to wear you out. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Let me give you rest. When people see a change, they know the change. Have you ever been under the, the leadership of someone who always bragged about their brokenness? They're not broken. If you got to tell people you've been broken, you ain't broke. Oh, my God, I'm on the airway like this. Yeah, yeah. You got, the, you got it inside of you, but you're not activating it. Hallelujah. Somebody, some, tell somebody I'm on my process to a Pentecost. Hmm. Oh. And the Bible says they caught so many fish they came back. But guess who recognized Jesus? Peter. The Bible says the same Peter. He always doing something, isn't he? <laughs> Lord loves Peter. He always doing something. I'm going to tell you why he loves him. Because Peter ain't sitting around trying to figure out if this is the Lord. Peter's saying something inside of me is telling me that it's the Lord. I'm going. This is not the time he walked on water. He jumped out of the boat. And the Bible said he swam to the shore. <laughs> he swam to the shore. That's what that, that that's what God is saying. You're laughing at him, but that's what he needs you to do. That when he tells you something and you're so submitted to him that you get out of your place of comfort and you swim towards him. You walk to him with your whole
whole heart and your whole mind and your whole soul. And you don't care what the people in the boat are saying. You don't care what the people in the boat are doing. You don't care what family and friends think about you. You All you know is you got to get to Jesus because you recognize him. Can I say, I hear it. God is calling somebody to get out of the boat. Move away from your comfort zone. Move out of self-sufficiency. God is ready to do a miracle and a sign and a wonder. You be the one get out of the boat. I tell you, tell yourself, I am submitting to the Holy Spirit today. Mm. Yeah, come on now. Submit, submit, submit. Submit, submit, submit. Uh, I hear the Lord. Submit, submit, submit. Submit. I hear the Lord. I hear the Lord. Submit. Submit to me. Lay it down and submit to me. Let me do the breaking. Let me do the filling. Let me do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) They got to the shore. Peter's over there with Jesus cooking fish. He's cooking for them. The Bible says this is the third time he appeared to them. After resurrection, he's sitting down cooking and eating with him. But then he turns to Peter. I thought this was powerful. Remember he, when, when Jesus resur- was resurrected, he told Mary Magdalene to go tell my disciples and Peter. Hmm. I, 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 I'm telling you, I love Peter too. Because when Peter went fishing, that meant he went back to his old lifestyle, his old way of provision. Yeah. Yeah, some of you thinking about it. Some of you thinking about thinking about it. I'm putting my foot on that devil right now. You can't go back to the old. You've been in isolation too long, and he's trying to work something out of you. The process is almost finished. Don't you go back to your own old self. I'm speaking to you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. You better not go back. The Bible said that Peter went back fishing. But but, but this is what I I, I, I like. Let's go back to 21 verse 3. It says, Simon Peter said unto them, I'm going fishing. Guess what? And they said, and we are coming with you. Y'all missed a good place. You know why why the blessing and the breaking? It ain't about you. It's about those who are attached to you. He knew Peter was a leader. He knew the people were watching Peter's life. He knew that Peter had an influence. Somebody say influence. Uh, You scared? Don't be scared because you got a whole line of influence that are coming. When you get this thing right, they're going to notice that it's the power of the Holy Spirit and they will surrender. Need I say more? You've been trying to get them to change all their life, haven't you? You've been praying for them all their life, right? Suppose it was just as as simple as this, that God used you. (laughs) Mm. Mm. I just veer off for a minute. The Ark of the Covenant, remember the, the veil in the temple was rent? The Ark of the Covenant back there made with acacia wood. That is a wood that, that, that the reason why it was acacia because it was so strong and it was there for generations. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is coming after generations. When you come into the presence of God, the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God, but it's hidden in acacia wood. And that means that he's not just after you, but he's after your generations after you. You want your children to change? God is calling you to receive him in a greater way Uh, he turns to Peter he's turned to Peter you can cut it off if you want but this is good to me he turns to Peter and then he says in verse 15 of 21 it says so when they had finished break breakfast Jesus said to Simon Peter isn't that something he now turns to Simon Peter and he says uh, uh, Simon son of John do you love me more than those others with total commitment and devotion he said to him yes Lord Guess what he said? You know that I love you with a deep personal affection as for a close friend. That's not what I asked you. I ask you, do you agape me? You're telling me that you phileo me. You better get this 
thing. He said, do you look at it? Do you love me with total commitment and devotion? That's agape love. He answered him, yes, Lord. You know I love you with a deep personal affection as for a close friend. That's phileo love. That's brotherly love. That's easier to love your brother than it is to have an unconditional love for all my people. He said, okay, well then feed my lambs. Because <laughs> we got to start you out with this love thing small. Yeah, because you're not ready to love those who are ready to bite you. <laughs> You, 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 you're not ready for lambs yet, for, she, for sheep yet. You're ready for lambs. <laughs> you're you ready to love those who love you. You're not ready to love those who are unloving. You, you're not ready to, you can't even love yourself because you don't have unconditional love for yourself. Your love is conditioned on phileo. That's where we get the, the brotherly love. Phil, Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love. He asks him again for the second time. Look, he said to him a second time, verse 8, 16, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Huh? With total commitment and devotion? Listen when he says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you with a deep personal affection. <laughs> As for a close friend, he said, well, you still ain't got it. You got the Holy Spirit in you, and you ain't got this love thing right yet. Good God Almighty, write that in your notes. On your way to Pentecost, God has got to perfect your love walk. <laughs> can, can, can I help somebody? Because you're going to run into some people that you just, you, you want to give them a piece of your mind. You love them like a brother. But that unconditional love is where it starts before you get to Pentecost. Then he said for the third time, he asked him for a third time. This time, look what he says. He says, Simon Peter, do you love me with a deep personal affection for me as for a close friend? He's saying, do you phileo me? He brought it down to Peter's understanding. God has been calling you up higher for a long time. And some of you refuse to go higher. And therefore, he has had to meet you down lower. He knew you had the potential to be greater than you are. You have the potential to be higher and more relevant than you are. He says, I know you have the potential to go higher because agape is the highest kind of love. But you're stuck in a, in a Barney kind of love. I love you. You love me. You, you, you see that? He's saying... Feed my sheep. Go ahead and feed them with that part. But when you get to Pentecost, I guarantee you that you're going to grow in your love walk. Last place I'm going, and y'all can get ready to go. Peter's talking to, to Jesus. I saw this so powerfully. In verse chapter 21, verse 19, it says, now he said this to indicate the kind of death which Peter would glorify. Matter of fact, let's go to uh, verse 18. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and walked wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hand and arms and someone else will dress you and carry you where you do not wish to go. Y'all didn't think that was in scripture. Yeah, isn't that powerful? He says, you're doing this while you're young, but when you get old, you're going to be dependent. And he's talking to Peter, and I don't want to dig, dig into that. Maybe I'll dig into that next week. But verse 19, he said, now he said this to indicate the kind of death which Peter would glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. Walk the same path of life that I have walked. You're now walking with Jesus and following him till you deny yourself. But that's not where I'm going. Verse 20, Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved, who is John, following them. Hmm, so that meant he was a little bit back. And Peter's having this conversation with Jesus. You know how we do. If we get the pastor alone, we can, t we can ask him what we, we mm. You know how we do. 
You know, we're going we're gonna to go. I don't want them to hear what I'm saying. They my brother. I don't want them to hear what I'm saying. And, and I can ask and get a little scoop on the inside if I get close enough to the pastor. But I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not going there. It says following them. And one also he had leaned back on his chest at the supper. And he said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? He said, he said he's the one that, John is the one that leaned over to Jesus and said, who is the one that's going to betray you? So Peter saw him. He asked Jesus, Lord, he asked Jesus, Lord, and what about this man? What is in his future? He begins to talk to Jesus and say, what about John? <laughs> what you going to do with John? He going to be a deacon? He going he gonna to be a minister? Tell me what, you know, because we started out together. And I need to know, you talking about me when I get old. I'm, what's happening but John? You know, he was the, the one that leaned on you. That's the one. What, t- tell me, what, what's good. this is Peter. <laughs> That's why Jesus loved Peter, because Peter had no cut cards. 22, Jesus said unto him, if I want him to stay alive until I come again, what is that to you? You just follow me. <laughs> Ain't that just like Jesus rebuking Peter after the resurrection? And he says, stop worrying about anybody else. Stop worrying about your sister and your brother. Stop worrying about their title and their position. Stop worrying about if they got a promotion or not. Stop worrying about their finances. Stop worrying about their fans. You just follow me. Someone shout, you just follow me. I thought that was so powerful. And God told me to tell you, you just follow him. Don't worry about if someone else is getting in front of you. You just follow him. It's part of the process. You got your own life. They've got their own life. You've got your own call. They've got their own call. You've got your own business. They've got their own business. Stop worrying about them. You Follow me. It got quiet. Yeah, when you're broken, you don't worry about what somebody else is doing. They ain't been doing it as long as me, and look at them. No, he is saying, you just follow me. You follow me. Because when you follow me, guess what? The breaking takes place. And that which is in you starts to be uh, relevant in the kingdom. Jesus was on the cross. He couldn't just been suffocated. His body had to be broken so that the spirit, the anointing, could come out in the earth atmosphere. And so my thing to you, as I end, is that you follow him. If you don't have a relationship with him, he's speaking to you. Stop worrying what people are saying. Stop worrying about what people are doing. Stop worrying about what they're saying, they're doing, and their judgments. You follow me. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, you have no excuse today. You have heard the word of God jump off the page into your heart to say, you follow me. This is your process to Pentecost. You follow me. I don't care if you're not a good preacher, good teacher, good wife, good mother, good good child, whatever. You just follow me. And if that's you, And I'm speaking to you. How do you follow him? First step is to receive him like the disciples did. He blew on them and they told them to receive the Holy Spirit. You receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Pray with me if you want to receive him. Father God, in the name of Jesus. I confess my sins. I relinquish control to you. Come into my heart. 
take full control of me. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins and he rose the third day. Therefore, I believe in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that, he was speaking to you. You are saved. We, we ask that you touch the tag because we don't want to just leave you out here just, just filled without going all the way and manifesting. So you just press the tag. If you have accepted Jesus Christ, if you've been a backslider and want to come back to Jesus Christ, or if you even need a church home, and I know you need a church home, press the tab. One of the ministers will be in contact with you to walk you through. Amen? And we believe in giving here at our church. We believe the whole full word of God. We, lead, we believe that he gives seed to the sower and that the seed actually goes back to him. So if you've been blessed, we ask you to sow. If you, you are members of our church or you want to give your tithe, we will accept that there is something scrolling around the, along the bottom of, of, the, li of uh, the live where you can give your tithe, give your offering, and be a blessing to the kingdom. Amen? Amen. God bless you, everybody. God bless you. Amen.